everyone, this is Jana from Studio Explorer Architecture. Today I want to talk about how to download SketchUp, how to view the 3D models we have shared with you, and how to take information from them. For example, you can dimension any uh, clay types or architectural elements with length or depth. You can also add notes to the SketchUp models if you want to change anything. And I also want to show you how to play with colors and materials. But first, we need to download SketchUp. SketchUp is a 3D modeling software that's easy to learn and incredibly intuitive to use. You can download it by going to www.sketchup.com. Click on the red button that says Download SketchUp, which will take you to the next steps and follow the on-screen directions. Make sure to choose Personal pro Projects in order to get the free version in the Let's Choose a Product tab. When you first run SketchUp, the Welcome to SketchUp dialog box appears, as shown here. You can uncheck the Always Shown Startup checkbox to stop it from appearing every time you open the software. In the Welcome to SketchUp dialog box, you can choose a template for your model. Choose architectural inches and feet. Now that we've got the software installed, I want to briefly explore the SketchUp user interface. The menu bar shows the majority of SketchUp tools, commands, and settings. The menus are File, Edit, View, Camera, Draw, Tools, Window, Extension, and Help. When you begin using SketchUp, the Getting Started toolbar is the one you see by default. It contains the basic tools for creating a 3D model. To display additional toolbars, select View, Toolbars. Check the box for the toolbar we will use the most, which is the camera. You can also choose the large tool set, which includes most of the camera and getting started toolbar commands. I will walk you through some of the more commonly used tools later. For more information, you can search SketchUp tutorials in YouTube. The drawing area is where the model is created. The status bar has two important elements the tips in the middle and the measurements box on the right. Tips for using the tools in the middle area of the status bar displays a brief sentence about using the selected tool. This area is helpful when you're, when you're not sure how a tool works. If you look at the above tabs, these are the scenes we have set up for you to take you around the model. You know a model has scenes because each scene appears as a series of tabs at the top of the model viewing area. We included scenes from different views of the model for the, from the exterior and interior. In the example before you, click on this tab here. This camera view will show you a perspective view of the exterior model from the front left view. PER stands for perspective and EXT for exterior. Perspective exterior rear high shows you the perspective of the exterior model from the rear top view as if a drone is taking a photo of your house from your rear yard. These scenes here show you the elevations of your house from all sides. Elevation exterior right shows the exterior elevation of the house from the right. ELE stands for elevation. If you click on streetscape, the camera view shows the house from the street next to the massing of your neighboring houses. You can scroll to the right to see more scene tabs using this, this arrow. If you click on section one, it shows you a section or slice through the middle of your house. This section is cut through the stairs. If you click on perspective interior foyer one, it will take you inside the house, standing in the foyer and looking towards the interior. INT stands for interior. In this view, you are standing in the living room and looking at the fireplace. And these three tabs take you to the kitchen and family room. You can scroll more to the right to see all the interior perspectives we set up for you for each single room. Powder room, mud room, bathrooms, etc. The following tabs are elevations of the interior rooms which we use in our construction documents. If you scroll more to the right and click cabinetry kitchen, it, it will show you the built-in cabinetry in the kitchen. CAB stands for cabinetry. 
Other named scene tabs are details around the house that we included in our construction documents. You can scroll back to the left using this left arrow to view the previous scenes. Now I want to talk about how you can have a tour around your future home. At the camera toolbar that you just added, click on the position camera tool. It is the tool that looks like a man standing on a red cross. The position camera tool position the camera view at a specific location, eye height and direction as if a person is standing at a point and looking around. It shows you what you see if you stand at this location. For example, if you want to see how a passersby would view your house from any point in the street, click the position camera tool. Then click in the drawing area, the location you want to see your house from. The view then changes to where you have clicked as if you are standing there. The mouse cursor will change to an eye shape, which is the look around tool. The look around tool pivots the camera view about a stationary point. You can also click on it from the toolbar here or here. Drag your mouse left and right, up and down, and this is what you see when you stand at the street. You can also simply hold down your mouse scroll wheel to make the orbit tool cursor appear and orbit around. While you are orbi orbiting around, you can hold down the shift key at your keyboard to pan up and down, left and right. You can also walk with SketchUp towards the front entrance and around the house using the walk tool, where you can find it here. Click the walk tool, click and drag the mouse in the direction you want to move. Straight up is forward, straight down is backward. The camera will follow your cursor and will stop whenever you come to a wall or door. Use the zoom tool to continue moving forward through the doors or walls if desired. As you use these tools to move around the model, you may find it helpful to imagine that you're behind a movie camera. With a little bit of practice using these camera tools, you'll be able to walk from room to room in your virtual SketchUp home. Another way to walk through a window or door for easier navigation is to temporarily hide these elements. The more common way to hide objects is to select and right click to hide them. You can unhide by going to edit, in the menu bar and click unhide, last, or all. You can also use your keyboard for faster navigation by holding Ctrl Z to unhide the last thing you have hidden. For example, I want to see what is below the roof. Select the roof, right click, and select hide. There is more than one group, so you can keep doing that until all roof and ceiling groups are hidden. or you can simply click at the scene tabs we have set up for first floor and second floor and orbit around. If you are inside a scene and you want to see what's behind the door, click on the door, right click, hide, then Ctrl Z to unhide. Going back to the tools we will be using today, I will explain and show you how each tool works. But first, I want to explain an important element in the status bar, the measurements box. This, this box is a critical tool for creating accurate models. In this box, you can see the exact dimension of an element you want to measure. The select tool selects objects to modify with other tools or commands. Drag mouse to, the, to select multiple objects or drag mouse the other way to select specific objects. The line tool. Click on the drawing area to draw lines. You can draw lines in whatever dimension you need. The line tool can also be used as a measurement tool. Click on one point of the item you want to measure, then hover above the other point. Use the shift key to lock the inference line for easier control. You know it's working when the line drawn becomes bolder. The links will show on the measurements box on the status bar. 
The tape measure tool is another way to measure distances by clicking on one point of the object you want to measure and hovering above the second point. The dimension will show on the measurements box below. The third way to take measurement is the dimension tool, which keeps the dimension line and number showing in the model. Click at the two end points of the line you want to dimension, then click the third time to position the dimension string. The text tool can be used to add comments to specific areas of the model. Just click at the area you want to comment on. Write your comment and click again in the drawing area to stop the command. If the knot gets too long, please hit enter to break up the long line of text. It is best if you use this tool after clicking at a specific scene. This way it is easier for us to find and read all your comments. The paint bucket tool applies color and material to any element of the model. Now I will show you how to play with the SketchUp, SketchUp model materials and colors. First, to replace one material with another. Say you want to show lap siding instead of painted stucco. You can swap the material quickly and easily by clicking at the default tray. Make sure to click at the pen above to keep it showing. If the material tray is not there, you can find it in Window, Default Trays, and select Materials. To change the material of a specific wall, double click on the wall. Our models use an extensive amount of nested groups, so if the wall does not look dotted like shown in the screen, then you need to double click again to enter the group within a group. When you see these dots, when you select a wall, then that means you can make changes to it. We want to add lap siding there instead of painted stucco, so we go to the materials tab, click at the arrow below. These show you all the materials you can choose from the SketchUp library. You can search the tu for tutorials to show you how to add more materials to your material library. Here you see asphalt and concrete, metal, roofing, but for now we will choose brick cladding and siding. I will choose the white lab siding and when you move your cursor to the drawing area, it will change to a bucket. Click at the wall you want to change, click space at your keyboard and click outside the group. And you you have your lap siding on this wall. Because the color and texture are separate, you can change them independently of each other. For example, you can change the lap siding color you just selected. How does yellow look? But keep the same texture. You can also edit the material's opacity, which controls how opaque or transparent the material is. To edit the material, the material select it in the model collection and click the Edit tab. Here's a brief introduction to the tools we will be using for editing a material's color. Picker drop-down list. Use the picker drop-down list to select between the HLS, which are Hue, Light, Saturation, HSB, Hue, Saturation, and Brightness, RGB, Red, Green, and Blue, and Color Wheel Color Pickers. Let's choose the color wheel for now and click at the yellow area. This is very bright yellow. Drag this wheel up and down to control how bright or dark you want it to be. Then go to HLS section to have more control over the color. H stands for who, which changes the who of the color. S changes the saturation of the color and L changes the light of the color. Now it looks much better. You can also still play with the HSB and RGB options if you want even more control fine-tuning the color. This is the undo color changes swatch. Cl click this swatch to undo all the color changes you make during an edit session. This button is the match color on screen button. Click this button to turn the cursor into an eyedropper. With the eyedropper cursor, click any entity to sample its color and apply that color to the material that you're editing. That's it for today. I hope you found this video useful. Now you can tour your future house. Have a nice day.